I love the Fantastic Four. I have two entire shelves dedicated to them in my secret lounge. In fact, the third video I ever made was on John Byrne's run on the title, where I said this. But the figure I want more than any other is Psycho Man. And this. We totally still need a new Fire Lord. Got them both. Let's look at a mystery box of the Fantastic Four's friends and foes. Take a peek at a few figures we still need. And of course, go through the history of every figure ever made of the Devourer of Worlds. All the way up to the spectacularly giant HasLab Galactus. I The first issue of the Fantastic Four was really the birth of the modern Marvel Universe, and it showcased Jack Kirby and Stan Lee, the co-creators, at their absolute peak. There are so many characters that came out of the FF, not just the main four heroes, but all of their friends and foes, and this box filled with a lot of those types of figures. Now, while they did create wholly new figures for their book, they weren't afraid to reach back into the past. I mean, the Human Torch himself actually was a character from the very first issue of Marvel Comics. As a matter of fact, he was featured on the cover. And another Golden Age hero was Namor the Submariner. So Namor was created by Bill Everett back in the 1930s and kind of got lost as Marvel became Atlas Comics and kind of just scuffed their way around for a while. But this Namor figure actually appeared early in the Marvel Legends line and is more reminiscent of his 1970s look. Now, Namor's about to become like a big star with the upcoming Wakanda Forever, and so we're going to see him. He looks like he's much more classic with just his green underpants, but he does have his flying wings. And because Namor was actually born of an Atlantean mother and a human father, he's actually considered Marvel's first mutant. And the wings on his ankles that allow him to fly are actually his mutation. Now, I really like this figure. It's got the great kind of Leonard Nimoy Spock ears. He's got the arched eyebrows. He even has like an earring in that ear. Just such incredible detail. I love the belt. Namor appeared very early in the FF when Johnny Storm found him as like just a hobo with a beard and he used his flame power to like shave him and he recognized this distinctive Namor profile and actually took him and dropped him in the water and all of a sudden the Prince of Atlantis returned. Now, Namor started out as a foe and has been at best an uneasy ally of the FF, constantly trying to work his way for the Invisible Girl's affections. Uh, but great figure. We've gotten some newer ones, some ones that are more in his green trunks, but there's something really cool about this like 1970s Namor figure. Now, let's take a look at some of the heralds of Galactus, starting with the one that I was so excited about. I even mentioned it in my third video ever, Fire Lord. So, Fire Lord, I believe, was the herald that came right after the Silver Surfer, and we haven't gotten him in six-inch form until just recently. He did appear in the five-inch line, but man, this thing was worth the wait. Look at that translucent fire head blasting off. And of course, with Fire Lord, it's all about this shaft, and they did not let us down. Again, these flame effects on both ends are also translucent, so you can get some really cool backlighting. And he's got good gripping hands that allow you to get him into some really sweet flying poses. Now, I don't really remember a lot about Fire Lord as a Herald of Galactus. My most vivid memory of Fire Lord is when he fought Spider-Man in two issues of The Amazing Spider-Man written by Tom DeFalco and drawn by Ron Friends. If you watched my interview with Ron Friends when we talked about the bombastic Bagman, one of his creations, you know that at the end of the interview we touched on his drawing of Fire Lord in those two issues and the famous and sort of controversial battle between Fire Lord and Spider-Man. So if you get a chance to check that interview out, you will not be disappointed. It was really a treat to get to do. The other figure that I begged for back in the day was Psycho Man. So Psycho Man goes way back with the FF. He is 
an early Jack Kirby creation, but he was kind of always a goof. He just sort of manipulated your emotions, and Reed would figure out a way to beat him, and they would go from there. Where he really took a step up was during John Byrne's time on the book, where he lured the Fantastic Four down to the microverse and tortured each of them individually. And let me tell you, it was rough. She-Hulk got it rough. Obviously, Johnny and Reed got it rough. But perhaps no one had their insecurities played on like the Invisible Girl, to the point where she actually snapped. She battled the FF under the Psycho Man's mind control, but she finally overcame, and she alone defeated the Psycho Man, and it was done off camera. Like, you did not see what she did to him, just kind of adding a little touch of horror. And to really kind of magnify that, once their battle was finished, she had a great soliloquy where she said, after all that I have been through, I am no longer the invisible girl. From now on, I am the invisible woman. And that really came from Psycho Man. Now, this is a spectacular figure with the green metallic paint going on. It really brings out that so Kirby head sculpt. He's got his uh, emotion modulating box going here. But one of the things that I think is so unique about this figure is how they managed to get this piping and it doesn't disrupt the articulation of the lower extremities. This is just a really nice touch. You know, this is one of our early pinless joints and man, oh man, they just completely crushed it with Psycho Man. When it came to world building, few people were as good at it as Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. And not only did they create incredible bad guys for the FF, they created great allies as well, including the Inhumans, here seen by their queen, Medusa. Now, I can't remember, is this the one that came in like the A-Force 5 pack? I think it might have been. You know, she has like magical hair that can you know, flip around and stuff. You know, all the Inhumans have superpowers after they pass through the Terrigen Mists as kind of a, a rite of passage as they go through puberty. We are sorely, sorely lacking in Inhumans figures. Sure, we've gotten Black Bolt, but I've had to cobble together an Inhumans display using the Lockjaw from the Mezco 112 line. I've got the screaming version of Black Bolt and a newer version of Medusa, but then I have customs for the rest of the Inhuman royal family like Crystal, Gorgon, Karnak, and Triton. I mean... We actually got these figures, most of them, in the 5-inch scale back in the day. We definitely need a big pickup. As a matter of fact, we were so late in getting them, I actually had a custom Medusa. Ugh, yikes. Tell you what, that's the kind of Medusa where if you look at her, you would turn to stone. So, thankfully, we've gotten a new one, and it's really quite spectacular. Before we get into more Heralds, let's take a look at another figure that appeared very early in the FF's run, and that's the Super Scroll. So the Scrolls are going to play an integral part in the FF's history as we go along, particularly when we talk about Nova. But the first uh, Scrolls that they faced, uh, they actually managed to defeat and convince them to change their shape into cows, and they were then meant to live the rest of their lives out in a cow pasture peacefully. Those uh, Scrolls then were instrumental in starting the Cree Scroll, Scroll War in the Avengers book, but then they faced a much tougher opponent in the Super Scroll. So the Super Scroll had the ability to mimic the FF's powers, and you can see here he's got the Thing's arm, and it's a little bit extended, uh, kind of like uh, Mr. Fantastic. He's got a little bit of flames on it, and there's probably some attempt to have him invisible as well. Love that head sculpt on this figure. So cool. And they did several variants of this one also. Another figure who's going to have a ton of figures in this box is none other than Victor Von Doom. Ooh, look at that. This is the original Toy Biz figure, and it looks like it dates from 2004. So this is an 18-year-old figure, but look at how much detail went into this. He does have a removable pistol in his holster right here on the side. He has his little jet packs, which are typically hidden by his cape. And of course, he had a removable mask. We'll probably find the mask down in the box. But what they did was they actually sculpted in 
the scarred countenance of Doom. So in John Byrne's run on FF, Doom got a scar in a failed experiment that he was working on at Empire State with Reed Richards. But then he went to study the mystic arts and he was very impatient. He was about to put on his new iron mask, but he didn't wait for it to cool. And he put it right on his head, burning his entire face and just disfiguring him completely. So he went from one scar that he thought was unsightly to truly having the face of a monster. Toy Biz really crushed it by capturing that. Now, I can see there's like a million Dooms and a million Silver Surfers in this box. We'll come to them. But before we do, let's talk about Morg. Yes, Morg, one of the Heralds of Galactus that came with the giant Haslab Galactus. And this is the first time we have ever gotten this figure. So Morg is actually a fairly new creation. He came out in Silver Surfer number 69 uh, with writer Ron Mars and artist Rob Lim creating him back in 1992. And he was like a uh, an executioner. And so when Galactus was having trouble with his heralds developing a conscious and not wanting to find habitable planets for him to destroy, Morg was the perfect just soulless being just completely without compunction and he served Galactus well but then of course as always he tried to betray Galactus using the ultimate nullifier and paid the price for it uh, dying while trying to betray his master but what an incredible morgue figure now if I had one complaint about this I'd love to see a little bit more paint wash over all of these nooks and crannies and bumps here just to give it a little bit more depth it has a gorgeous sculpt terrific axe accessory and some really cool new parts on the legs and on the arms but just a little just a little bit more paint app would have really gone a, a long way with this figure now another herald that we got in the galactus pack was frankie ray nova now it's interesting frankie ray's actually been around in the comics for a fairly long time she debuted in fantastic four issue 164 all the way back in 1975 uh when the title was being worked on by writer Marv Wolfman, and artist George Perez. And at the time, she was just like an off-again, on-again Johnny Storm girlfriend. But the catch was she was always afraid of fire. That was kind of what made her a slightly interesting character. But it wasn't until John Byrne took over the book that she really reached her potential. So Johnny kind of hooked back up with her, and, you know, her fear of fire was, you know, part of the little story. But then it was discovered that her stepfather was uh, Phineas um, Horton, the creator of the original Android Human Torch. And that when she was a little girl, she was actually doused in the chemicals that brought the Android Human Torch to life. All of a sudden, she burst into flames, she has superpowers, and she goes by the nickname Nova. And for a few issues, she actually assisted the FF on their adventures. But during that time, Byrne kind of set up her story. They, they were fighting bad guys, and like she was completely not afraid to use lethal force and just kind of, you know, make some questionable moral decisions that even had Johnny wondering, you know, what are we getting into? And so, of course, Galactus comes to Earth and he looks to devour the planet and he's, you know, is needing a new herald. And so Frankie says, I have always wanted to wander the spaceways. And so she volunteers to be Galactus's herald. And so he imbues her with the cosmic power. She changes into this form with this gorgeous translucent flowing hair and she served Galactus faithfully for many years. In fact, it was Frankie Ray Nova who took Galactus to the Skrull homeworld where he subsequently devoured it, which left a huge gap in the power struggle between between the, the Skrulls uh, and the Kree. So a vital, vital figure. She was eventually killed by Morg uh, as she was battling him with the Silver Surfer. Uh, but she's kind of been resurrected because comics and she's around. Now, I like this figure. I really like the plastic, the metallic plastic that they used. But I think I still prefer my old 1990s Toy Biz figure because it has that like vac metal finish that really pops. And I think I'm probably going to leave that one in my display, but there's always room for another Frankie Ray Nova. Of course, the most famous Herald of Galactus is none other than Norrin Rad, 
the Silver Surfer. And this Surfer figure with the base is the one that came with HasLab Galactus. It has a slightly different head sculpt than our most recent one, which I really like. It's He's got like a hint of ears there. He has a little bit more human look to him. Great articulation so that you can get him into so many cool Surfer poses. Let's see. Let's see if we can find... Nope, not this one. This one was an early Hasbro one. A little bit of a thinner body, a little bit shinier silver, a little bit too much muscle there in the neck. I don't know that I like that one quite as much. Uh, let's see, this one. Nope, I think this was a Diamond Select one. Let's see, yep, DST. See if there's a year on there, not really. So he's a little bit larger in size, definitely limited what you can do with the hips on this one. I do like that silver paint, and he does have a pretty sweet sculpt, but nope, still still choosing this one. Oh, here we go. Here is the very first Marvel Legends Silver Surfer. Now, that is a much more alien head sculpt. I mean, he almost looks like something out of Area 51 in, Arizona, uh, in uh, New Mexico. Interesting articulation. He has those old-school toy biz ball hips. The thing that really bothers me with this one is Yes, I am happy that they got these joints where you could really get his arms up into some surfing poses. Ugh, but those shoulders, they're just too wide. Those huge ball-jointed shoulders, just really, really goofy. So, new one is still winning. All right, let's see. Oh, 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 here we go. Oh, man. Now, this is an old one. This is the one that came in that first uh, Toy Biz collector series. So, this is a slightly larger figure. The date on it... 1997. Now, of course, he's got fairly limited articulation. His head really only works in that spot. He only has ball joints at the shoulders, which is pretty good for riding your surfboard, but with so much limitation here at the hips, it's really hard. But this was a major step forward as far as sculpting for Toy Biz, and when they really started getting serious about sculpting figures for collectors. But... The new one's still winning. All right, let's see what's next. Okay, this is looking like another one of the kind of original Toy Biz ones. This one may have come in like a box set or something. It has a little bit of a different paint scheme with the, the blue highlights on it. Of course, Toy Biz would always rock out those articulated fingers. You got to love that. And he has the big latissimus muscles here that allow for him to move up. But nope, 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 nope. Still, still going with the new one. Let's see, more surfers. Oh, here we go. So, again, that kind of looks like the original, but with a more really, really silver paint scheme. I like that. I think I might like the uh, the paint color, the way this one pops a little better. But no, overall, this one still has the, the best skull. I'm trying to see, is it? Could it be? No, that's another one of those early Hasbro ones. I'm trying to see if there's a... Oh, here we go. Here's a contender. Oh, look at this. From the 90s Toy Biz line, from the Silver Surfer cartoon line, they made a classic surfer with the VAC metal silver. Now, of course, this one has seen better days. You can see as it ages, that VAC metal kind of wears off and it's worn off on his legs. But can you imagine when this thing was new, straight out of package, how it would just pop and shine? I mean, look at how much shinier, how much more silver, how much more metallic it is compared to our new surfer. So I think we're going to have to say that this is probably the best surfer figure that we've gotten. The only one that really compares is the Walgreens surfer, and I have him down in my FF display, so we can't really compare them one-to-one. -one. So, nice job, HasLab. You gave us a definitive silver surfer. Ah, here we go. Here's a green trunks Namor. Now, if you look at this figure and you're like, whoa, that thing looks weird, you are right. This was early Hasbro. This was when Hasbro had just taken over the Marvel Legends line, and they were trying to figure some things out. I think this probably is like 2006 or something like that, 2004. Look at how weird the paint application is. Like it's it's like yellow mustardy just sort of splattered all over the figure. The sculpt is there, but the paint really makes it kind of wonky. Weird knee joints do give you a good range of articulation, but really strange. This Namor, I think because he's just kind of so 
old school looking. I think of this as like my golden age Bill Everett Namor. So I keep him with like my World War II cap and, and my invaders group. So I think he fits in much better with them. All right, let's take a look at the best bad guy in the history of the Marvel Universe, and that is none other than the good Doctor, Doctor Doom. This says 2004. I think this is a, a Diamond Select figure. He looks to be a little bit larger in scale, has the D on his belt. Again, has his pistol. His pistol actually has a wooden, a wooden handle on it. Wow, that is some nice detail there. And, of course, let's check his back and see if he has his rocket packs. No! So you get a demerit. That's a minus point on your Doctor Doom, but a really solid head sculpt from Diamond Select. This was the one that I believe came with the throne, with the Doom throne, which was really, really solid. Here's another cape. That one comes with one of the newer ones. Ah, uh, here is a newer one. Probably, I bet that cape, yeah, that cape looks like it fits with that. So this one says... Can we see it? I can't see it. 2012. Okay, so here's one from 2012. A little bit newer. The head is not nearly as grotesque as what we saw on the Toy Biz figure. This is a Hasbro. He does have his jetpacks. A little bit of a flatter look. Let's see what we have here. Oh, I remember this one. This was, I think, Hasbro's earliest attempt at Doctor Doom. And listen, that's a really good classic Doom. I would like him if he wasn't quite so matte, with this silver, if it was a little bit, jetpacks, if it was a little bit, you know, fancier there. Uh, I think his mask, this this is actually the same figure we just looked at with the mask on. So really, really choice. And is this another one? I guess I really liked this one. I guess I have like a million of them. Another of the original Toy Biz. And then, of course, the most recent Doom that we have gotten is the one from... Was it not Secret Invasion, not Secret Wars, not Secret... Secret something um, where Doom and Molecule Man had basically taken over. And this is like God Emperor Doom in his white outfit. I do like that he has a unique head sculpt specifically for this figure. No jetpacks. You don't need jetpacks when you have like the powers of, of a god. Uh, I, I kind of read that storyline, but I don't really remember it. So I'm just going to say, yeah, this is going to end up still in the box. A couple of more Namors. Actually, a lot of more Namors. So here are two that we have seen. The original Toy Biz 70 look, 70s look and the old school look. And then here was the Walgreens exclusive 70s look. Now this is definitely a step up. I mean, you see, this is, this is a nice looking figure. Really nice metallic paint apps. Really good head sculpt that looks like he just came out of the water. That's something that I've always appreciated appreciated about this figure is it looks like he just came out and just, just splashed down. So really, really cool. More parts to Super Scrolls. So in case you need extra Super Scroll arms, those are right there. Got an entire box full of Silver Surfer surf, surfboards. Here's a little bit of a cleaner version of that Namor. Dang, that is a nice figure. And finally, we have two different versions of... Black Bolt. This is a newer one. I like the plastic, the hard plastic under wings. You know, that's a, such a key thing. You know, they can't quite get it right with Spider-Man, but for some reason it actually really works for Black Bolt. God, that's a good figure. That one looks really good. Great kind of standard articulation. I, I never can tell, but this is probably that Bucky Cap body that everybody was on. But I like that. But before that, they actually tried to do like cloth under wings and you can see they just sort of they just kind of get poofy they don't they don't work quite as well this this figure had some of the older articulation there's those weird knee joints just not not quite as good but you know at the time it was great but boy what a what a step up with this black bolt while Jack Kirby and Stan Lee were establishing the foundations of the Marvel Universe in Fantastic Four, they were also perfecting a unique way of creating comics, dubbed the Marvel Method. This format gave the artist, in this case Kirby, tremendous creative freedom to plot and draw the story, and allowed Lee to dialogue the story while editing the entire line. The pinnacle of their creative collaboration was FF issues 48-50, to known as the Galactus Saga. The duo created an adversary beyond good and evil, truly a force of nature who feeds on the life force of planets. 
When Kirby turned in the art for issue 48, he included a character he described as a fallen angel, one who had not been a part of the team's plot discussions, a herald who would seek out the planets for his master to feast upon. Lee immediately took to the character's noble appearance, and the Silver Surfer was born. With the help of the Watcher, Johnny retrieves the ultimate nullifier and Galactus retreats, but he would return time and time again to every corner of the Marvel Universe. Fun fact, Galactus appears differently to each alien species he encounters, similar to their race or a deity of their religion. Oh, this is going to be so much fun. We are going to go through all the different Galactus figures, and we're going to go from smallest to largest. So let's start out with a Mini Mates Zombie Galactus. So we need to talk more about Mini Mates around here. They're so cool, and they have touched on such different parts of the Marvel Universe that we really haven't seen anywhere else. Now, they did make a regular Galactus in like a four-pack of Heralds. I just can't find that one, but I did at least find my zombie Galactus Minimates, and I love how they get all of this detail. He's got a totally great zombie head underneath his mask. He's got good articulation, but let's just compare the size of the zombie Minimate to the HasLab Galactus. I mean, he, he, like, is swallowed up by his palm. Unbelievable. So that's our first one. Next, we've got the Funko Pop Galactus. And I actually did a, uh, a whole video on the Fantastic Four Funko Pops just because they're just such candy-colored Jack Kirby goodness. I have this one. I also have the larger pop that they made of Galactus, which actually has his hand open and a little tiny silver surfer that fits in it. But... I, I, something about just the size and shape of this, the giant head, I think really works. That is an extremely Jack Kirby looking costume that they have there. And of course, he's got the square eyes, which is such a nice touch. So really, really cool. Now, next, just a little bit larger comes the Squaddies Galactus. Yes, in the Superheroes Squad cartoon and in that line, they actually made a smiling, happy Galactus. He's just so super psyched to come and devour your planet. Of course, he only has four fingers because the Squatties, you know, are cartoon characters and they only have four fingers. But how hilarious is it that you've got like this bug-eyed, cartoony Galactus that came in the Superhero Squad line? And you can see he's getting a little bit bigger. This figure's, you know, probably a little bit larger than six inches. So he kind of towers over the other Squatties, but still a little on the small side. Now, next, we're getting into a really cool Galactus figure, and this is the one that came in the Silver Surfer line. So he is slightly larger. He's probably eight or nine inches tall, so a good size, uh, a little bit bigger than the six-inch figures uh, that, we, that we've seen before. Galactus actually has a really cool origin story. So his name is actually Galen, and he was an explorer and uh, astronaut, and he was actually from the universe that existed prior to the Big Bang. And so he was out like doing his scientific exploring when the previous universe collapsed on itself. Galen survived and came through the Big Bang. So that makes him essentially the oldest living creature in our universe. And as he came through, he was imbued with the cosmic power and basically became the force of nature that we know him as someone who goes around and judges planets' worthiness and devours them if they are not worthy. This is a little bit of a modern head sculpt. It's definitely got that kind of classic Kirby feel, but with a little bit more a little bit more modern look to it. This figure came out, I think, in like 1997. Uh, so it's been around for a while. I guess that's like 25 years. And his hands are in sort of this unusual shape. It, it kind of limits his posability. But the reason for that is because he came with this silver surfer who's in this liquid ball. So it's meant to where he can hold the surfer who's floating around in this kind of clear liquid that came with the figure. Now, over 25 years, a little bit of that fluid has evaporated, but there's still enough in there so that the surfer floats around. But this is definitely one of the cooler Silver Surfer figures, just because of how comic accurate it is, and the fact that it actually really does feel like a real action figure. 
Now, the Fantastic Four had their own toy line back in the mid-90s, roughly around 1995, and we got this Galactus in that line. Now, this is obviously meant to be kind of a kid's play toy. It doesn't have nearly the detail of sculpting. Of course, I'm missing his ears on this one. I'm also missing the giant drill that he came with. So this figure came with like this long, like light up drill. I guess that was so that, you know, he could drill down to the center of the planet so that he could, you know, see how many licks it took to get to the center of the planet's Tootsie Pop so that he could devour it. But it lit up. There's like an electronic feature, I think, where that fits in. Here he's got his battery pack and his on off switch. Not a lot of paint detail, but still, you know, kind of cool. Sort of, he's, he's really limited articulation wise, just basically you know, head and shoulders, but he was meant to end, I guess, at the wrist so that he could hold his world-devouring drill. But they took a lot of the mold from this figure and made a really sweet new addition in the Silver Surfer line. So this one came out closer to 1997, I believe, and you can just see how much more detail there is on that head, on his giant headdress. He's got the vac metal, metal red going on, so it really stands out. A little bit more detail throughout the rest of his sculpt here. Again, pretty limited articulation, just shoulders, a little bit here at the wrist, and they took away the articulation at the head because that would get in the way of this incredible action feature. Oh my gosh, how great is that? He actually says, Oh, it's so awesome. I, I got this. I, my wife and I were already kind of out of school when, when this figure came out. And we just would laugh and laugh at that eye hunger. And then, of course, then he goes into straight techno disco mode. So, a pretty worthy addition to any Galactus collection. But now we are getting to what I really felt like would have been the creme de la creme forever and for always. And that was the original Build-A-Figure in Toy Biz's Marvel Legends line, the 19-inch Galactus. And I'm fortunate, I actually have a couple of these. Uh, I was gifted one by someone at work, and I think that's the one that we're looking at here, because I have the other one down on display as the centerpiece of my John Byrne Fantastic Four display, because it just is so great. And I think that this figure really does kind of capture multiple eras, of Galactus. He does have kind of the Kirby stylings with his skirt and sort of the wavy lines and these boots, but then he has, you know, a little bit more modern look to his head sculpt and his face with those eyes. I think that's a little bit more consistent with the 1980s John Byrne vision of the character. Uh, this was a complete game changer. You know, this was, this was the first in the build of figures that really encouraged collectors to buy every single figure in a wave. And what it was, was, you know, if you bought a wave, you guys know what this is, because this has become the standard over the last 20 years. But at the time, you'd have figures that were like peg warmers, and, you know, you couldn't necessarily sell them. I mean, you'd have like, you know, an a bald guy in a wheelchair in the form of Professor X, like, who's going to buy that? That's just going to sit on shelves. But then when you include a pack-in of a Build-A-Figure part that you have to get every single figure in order to complete the Build-A-Figure, well, it just changes the game completely. And this was the very first one. And honestly, I don't know that it was topped. Actually, the Sentinel that came right after this was pretty daggum incredible. And there have been some amazing Toy Biz build figures and Hasbro build figures as well. But all hail to the chief. This was the gold standard. And look at how small it is compared to the HasLab Galactus. He doesn't even make it to his waist. This figure towers over my Fantastic Four display. And he's only half the size of HasLab Galactus. Now, to give you another idea of just how big HasLab, HasLab Galactus is, I've got another friend here. Oh, let's bring this guy into the picture. Here is our first HasLab, the Sentinel. And he's close, but he's clearly a head shorter 
than than the Devourer of Worlds. Now I've been thinking about how on earth am I going to show you this thing because it's just so big and he's hard to get to stand up. And there have been so many great reviews already done on it. So let me just kind of step back and we'll look around and really kind of go through the details of this figure. Why don't we start at the bottom and work our way up? Here are Galactus's feet. They're molded even down on the bottoms. You can see he's got, you know, kind of his sneakers on. Good purple and black design, strong ankles, comes up to these great Kirby wavy type of looks right here. I mean, that is such a geometric Jack Kirby within the piping running around. Coming on up, he does have that very, very Kirby-esque skirt going on. You know, I like the, the combination of the dots with the triangular sort of lines. That's really, really nice. It's not fully Kirby accurate, but I don't think it really needs to be. This figure is much more of a amalgamation of a number of different designs. Of course, the hands are just spectacular. Every single joint is articulated, and you can get this guy into basically any pose that you could get a human hand into. I mean, the, the fingers move in every direction, arguably even in some directions the human hands don't move. Of course, we come to the chest piece, and this is where you push the button, and you start to get the light-up effects really strong. The eyes light up as well as up above at the head. Now the head sculpt is not the traditional Jack Kirby. They went a little differently, which I think is okay. You know, we've already seen kind of the, the Kirby look. We've seen the burn look. And so this is a little bit of a more, a more modern, a newer take on the figure, but I do think it's absolutely terrific. And of course you can switch the face plates out very easily. I think overall, this is nothing but a win, and I'm so glad that it got fully funded and has been added to my collection. Can't get enough of the best in comics history and action figures? Check out these two videos, and as always, click like and subscribe to Carbon Scoring.